Have you ever wondered what the loudest plane in history was? You might be thinking of a jet engine. But what if I told you that there was once a turboprop plane that was so loud it made the ground crew sick? That plane was the Republic XF 84H Thunder Screech. The Thunder Screech was a prototype turboprop plane designed for the US Air Force in the 1950s. It was equipped with a massive propeller that spun at supersonic speeds, producing a unique noise that earned it the nickname Thunder Screech. But the noise was more than just loud. It was also incredibly disruptive, causing nausea, headaches, and even vomiting among the ground crew. The thunder screech was so loud that it could be heard up to 25 miles away and even rumored to have caused damage to nearby buildings. In this video, we will take a closer look at the Republic XF-84H thunder screech, explore how it became the loudest plane ever built, and examine the impact it had on aviation history. So buckle up and get ready to experience the deafening roar of the thunder screech. The Thunder Screech was a US experimental turboprop version of the F-84 Thunder Streak fighter design to launch from a carrier without a catapult. While the Navy terminated the project, the US Air Force accepted it for testing, aiming to break the unofficial record for the fastest propeller-driven aircraft. To achieve this goal, they developed an ultrasonic propeller that worked well with the turbo engine on the Thunder Screech. The Republic XF-84H Thunder Screech was designed to solve issues faced by the early fighter planes, including difficulties taking off on short runways due to high acceleration. The initial goal was to achieve speeds exceeding 1000 miles per hour, but aerodynamic flaws and reliability issues led to the program's failure. Additionally, the propeller was so loud that it caused physical nausea for ground employees. Thunder Screech attempting to address these problems but ultimately was unsuccessful. The Thunder Screech, a stubby high-speed jet developed in 1955, had supersonic prop tips that made it loudest and most disruptive aircraft at the time. Turboprops were already being used by the American Navy as a solution to earlier jet problems by June 1945. During flight, a gas turbine engine operated the propeller at optimal revolutions per minute with power output regulated by adjusting the blade pitch or angle of attack. Initially, jet engines were perceived as slower and harder to control than turboprop engines but they consumed less fuel. The Navy preferred the Allison T-38 gas turbine engines producing 2,250 shaft horsepower at 14,300 rpm, with a gear ratio reducing it to 2,100 rpm. The T-40 engine, capable of producing 7,500 shaft horsepower, caught the Navy's attention. They believed that combining the two T-38 engines with a T-40 engine could create a powerful aircraft. The T-40 engine were created to contract torque, increasing the aircraft's maneuverability at low speeds. The Navy believed that deactivating one engine during the flight could extend the cruise range. Navy requested a series of T-40 aircraft including two-engine bomber, a single-engine strike plane, a four-engine flying boat, and VTOL fighters. The VTOL fighters allocated to conveyor and Lockheed were unsuccessful prototypes. North American and Douglas aircraft were awarded contracts for transport planes but both were unreliable due to engine problems. As a result, Douglas aircraft piston engine Sky Raiders continued to be used in Vietnam for two decades after their replacements were built. The Air Force initiated the Curtis Wright and Hamilton Standard Challenge to develop a high-speed performance propeller. They designed a unique three-blade air screw with a 12-foot diameter rectangular blade. The prop was intended to rotate steadily at 3000 rpm with the outer 20 to 24 inches reaching supersonic Mark 1.18 speeds. The F-84 and Republican XF-84H had many shared components and looked similar to the surface. Thunder Streak had air intakes near the wings. It had a broad fuselage to fit the T-40 dual turbine engine and extended shafts to drive the single prop. The powerful propeller caused turbulence, so the horizontal tail surfaces were raised and a vertical fin added over the cockpit for stability. It resembled the photo reconnaissance version. Repositioning the air intake and adding asymmetrical wing flaps aimed to regulate torque. The XF-84H was the first to have a retractable ram air turbine, which was useful due to varied engineering use. 
The plane was significantly different from the F-84 and had novel features such as a retractable ram air turbine and afterburner. The Air Force briefly considered changing its designation to F-106. The XF-84H was the first turboprop with afterburners capable of supersonic flight with 7400 horsepower. However, the engine issues including problems with the drive shaft and gearbox caused the cancellation of the program. The supersonic propeller blades produced a loud howling noise, the worst aspect of the experimental aircraft. Two prototypes were created and tested at Edward Air Force Base, but warming up the engine for 30 minutes before takeoff made them unsuitable for combat, leading to the program's demise. The XF-84H prototype suffered from technical faults in the prop pitch gear causing tremendous vibration. Only two civilians were safeguarded during the experiments with Lynn Hendrick refusing to fly again. The remaining 12 flights were flown by the test pilot Hank Beard, with 10 of his 11 flights ending in emergency landing due to engine failure and ongoing vibration issues. Beard described the experience as a handful, with propeller governor causing the plane to roll widely out at 400 knots. The XF-84H's severe vibrations were caused by the technical issues in the prop pitch gear, making it a difficult and unpleasant aircraft to fly. The prototypes flew for only a short time and had a high rate of emergency landings. The noise produced by the supersonic propeller was its worst problem, earning it the nickname as Thunder and Screech. The aircraft remains as a unique record holder in aviation history as it was never flown by an Air Force pilot due to its unpleasant flight experience. The XF-84's noise was its worst problem, with the propeller blades moving faster than the speed of sound, creating a sonic boom and knocking people to the ground. Crew members experienced headaches and an engineer suffered a seizure due to the shock waves. The vibration of the aircraft was so severe that the, they almost destroyed control tower components. To avoid complaints, the Air Force Flight Test Center directed Republican Aviation to tow the jet out to Rogers Dry Lake before test flights. Multiple complaints were filed due to the shock waves and air traffic controllers had to turn off many systems and identify the jet using light signals held by humans. The XF-84's numerous problems led to the Air Force cancelling the program after Phase 1, and it was deemed unsuitable for combat. Despite this, the aircraft holds the record for the fastest propeller plane ever built with a peak speed of 670 miles per hour, although this has been disputed. The National Museum of the United States Air Force lists its maximum speed at 520 miles per hour, while the record for the fastest propeller plane is held by the 1989 rare beer variant of the Grunman F8F Beercat with a speed of 528 miles per hour. The XF-84H experiment was abandoned as the aircraft could only operate when attempting to land on the deck. Only two prototypes were built with a projected peak speed of 670 miles per hour, but it never flew faster than 450 miles per hour. The Russian Tu-95 now holds the record for the fastest propeller airplane with a peak speed of 575 miles per hour. One of the prototypes served as a gate guard at Bakersfield Airport before being delivered to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in 1992, where it is still on display today.